We are talking about some of the basics today. So what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is a video that I've been wanting to shoot for a little while, but I haven't had everything to be able to show you guys. So now that we have a fully disassembled engine behind us, I wanna cover the basics. How does an engine work? So we know what these are, we know what they do, but not everyone knows how they work. So as you guys are aware, there are three things that we need to make an engine run air, which is obviously all around us, fuel, which we get wherever we need to, and spark. So ideally what happens is the air and the fuel mix together in the intake manifold, or if you're a direct injection car inside of the cylinder, the spark from the spark plug ignites it and creates an explosion. But what exactly is containing the explosion? What happens after it explodes? Where does all of that go? Let's take a look at it all. So let's start at the back of the car before we even get up into the engine. You gotta get fuel up into the engine. And how does that work? Well, you gotta have a fuel pump. So essentially what the fuel pump is going to do is it's going to pump all of that fuel out of the fuel tank, send it up through some fuel lines up to the front of the car where it's going to meet up with the fuel pressure regulator. What your fuel pressure regulator does is it regulates the fuel pressure before it goes into the injectors. Now regulating your fuel pressure is something that you're gonna need to do so that way you don't have fuel pressure just all over the place because your car or any car for that matter is going to take a very specific fuel pressure. Now you can modify and alter that a little bit to meet whatever your modification needs are if you are modifying the car. But for a basic engine, it's always gonna be set from the manufacturer. Now, once it's gone through the fuel pressure regulator, it's obviously going to go up and it's going to hit your injectors. Now, what the injectors sole job is to do is to mist that fuel inside of the chamber. So it's going to be atomized. So essentially what that means is it's going to spray a very fine mist of fuel into the intake manifold, or in our case, on the Subaru engines, the TGVs. It's then going to mix with the air, go past the intake valves, and then it's going to get into the cylinder where at that point it will ignite. Now, when the uh, air fuel mixture actually ignites, there's a lot that's going on. So we have talked about how fuel gets into the engine. Obviously it goes from the fuel pump in the gas tank up to the fuel pressure regulator, and then it gets passed to the injectors where it is then atomized into the intake manifold, unless you're direct injection where it will then be passed into the cylinder itself. Now, where does the air come from that mixes with the fuel? Obviously the air has to come from somewhere. So on all cars, you're gonna have some type of intake system. On stock cars, it's going to be a box with a panel filter most of the time. Some after, or some stock cars do come with cone filters, um, but I don't see too many of them. So with a cone filter, you're obviously gonna be sucking air from all around it. With a panel filter, it's gonna use a snorkel or intake system like this, where it's gonna be passed to the intake and then passed into the intake track. Now, once it goes through the filter into the intake track, it has to pass through the intake manifold where it will then meet with the fuel combined together to create a wonderful, wonderful air fuel mixture or that can be ignited, exploded, and make all the goodness. Now, if you are on a turbocharged or supercharged application, then obviously the turbocharger or the supercharger is going to compress the air so you can get more air into the engine. Because remember, more fuel, more air, more boom, more power. It's what we like, we like more power. We want all the power. Give us all the power, we want the power. So as you can see on the turbo in front of me, there are a couple things here. Turbos run off of exhaust gas, obviously, which spins the impeller wheel, which sucks air in, which compresses it, pass through the intercooler to help cool it down to at least try to get it to ambient temp, where it's then put into the engine. Because you want cool air going in there, you don't wanna be sucking in hot air. With supercharger, it works relatively the same. Some of them use intercoolers, some of them do not use intercoolers. Um, just gets compressed air a little bit cooler. But now that we know how fuel and air get into this engine, let's talk about what happens on the inside of it because that's the part that we just don't see. So this is all the fun that you don't see inside of the engine when it is operating. So after you have an air and a fuel mixture, it needs to go somewhere after it leaves the intake manifold. It's going to flow into the cylinder head right here, these top ports. This is where the intake manifold sits on top of the engine. After the air and the fuel mixture have gone in here, it is then going to be passed behind these valves. On the top of these, you can see these are our intake valves these are our exhaust valves. So what's going to happen is the engine is going to be timed properly, which puts everything into a very nice sequence. You've got your cams that sit on the back side of the cylinder head over here, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. But the cams and everything timing wise is going to be lined up. So that way your intake valves are all opening at the right time. Your exhaust valves are all opening at the right time. If your timing is off in your car, this is when you can start bending valves, destroying pistons, destroying rods, destroying your case halves, destroying your blocks, whatever you maybe have. It can cause a lot of damage if you try to run your car with your timing off or it might not even run at all. So what's gonna happen is the air is going to enter in through the top of the cylinder head. The two intake valves are gonna open up when your camshaft, which sits on the back side, hits the buckets for all of the intake and exhaust valves. That is what is timed. So it's going to open and close these at the appropriate times. After the intake valves on this side have opened, it's going to let that air fuel mixture in here. Now, where do you get the spark from? Another very good question. 
So your spark plug right here is going to be sitting on the outside of the cylinder head. So this is where your valve cover would normally be. Your, all of your spark plugs are gonna end up screwing right in here. Actually, I'll screw one in so that way you guys can see it. So like I said, this is the back side of your head that faces the engine itself this part. So as you can see on the top, we have our intake valves and our exhaust valves. So when the intake valves open up and they let all of that air fuel mixture in, your spark plug, which threads in right to the middle of it, will ignite and burn all that stuff off. When that happens, you are creating an, ex an explosion in the engine, which then pushes this piston back. The rod and the piston are connected together by a wrist pin right here. The rod itself, as you can see, is connected to the crankshaft. So what happens when that explosion happens is it pushes against the top of the piston, which pushes on the rod, which spins the crankshaft. So after that explosion has happened and the engine has spun, the exhaust valves open up and let all of that exhaust gas out of the exhaust on the bottom of the cylinder head, which then goes into the exhaust or your header and then if you are on that turbo application, spins your turbo through this, spinning your impeller wheel, sucking in more air, and making more bang. So this all works together very, very smoothly. When you start disassembling and understanding the engine a little bit more, it's not as complex as it seems. I promise you guys that. Okay, so I touched on cams a little bit. What is a cam and what does it do? So as you can see here, this is our cam for this engine. It's got lobes going all the way around it. This is our exhaust cam. For our engine, it uses internal gears right here to time the intake cam with the exhaust cam. Now what this does is it inlays right inside the engine like so. Now as you can see, when this spins, these lobes move. On the back side of the lobes is where the buckets sit for the valves. And what happens is the cam itself, the lobe will spin around, push on the bucket, and open up whatever valve it needs to. So like I said, you've got an intake and exhaust cam. The reason for that is like we talked about earlier. The air goes in, it explodes, it has to go somewhere. All that dirty air needs to evacuate and exit. Now what the cam will do is it'll open up the buckets, which will open up the valves, which lets all that air flow outwards. So you've got air going in, cam opening all the valves, air going out, cam opening all the valves. So this is how you get air in and out of the engine when you have a combustion cycle going on. It's a very, very easy process to, under, to understand once you actually see it all. I know it can sound a little daunting or a little dreading um, when you're just trying to explain it without these visual aids. So right now we are looking in the engine like if you were a rod and a piston traveling towards the valves. As you can see down at the very end of the cylinder, we have our spark, our spark plug right in the middle of it. On the top, we have our intake valve and in the bottom we have our exhaust valves. Now what will happen is the piston will travel all the way down to the end of the cylinder. It'll have the air and the fuel mixture which will then be compressed against the valves. The spark plug will make a spark which will ignite the air fuel mixture sending the piston and rod all the way back down and spinning the crank. It'll continue to repeat this process as long as the engine is on. That is what spins your crankshaft. Now the piston and the rod moving and the explosion moving this back towards it, like I said, will spin the crank. Now, how does this interfere with the rest of the car? On the back side of the crank here, you can see a circular bolt pattern. This is where your flywheel will bolt up and your clutch assembly will sit against the flywheel and that's what delivers power to the wheel. Now overall, it's not too difficult of a system after you play with it for a little while. Just keep in mind, um, the timing is going to play a huge factor in how the engine operates. So without timing, your engine just won't work properly because remember, you have to have those intake valves and those exhaust valves opening at the appropriate times uh, to be able to make mini explosions inside of a compressed cylinder to move your crankshaft to make power. So all in all, not too bad. So I hope this helps some of you guys out on understanding what is actually going on inside of your engine. All engines pretty much will follow these basic principles of how they operate with the exception of diesels and a couple other engines out there. But if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments. Like I said, I hope this helps some of you guys out. Just a very brief introduction on what is actually going on inside of your engine. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue like the backside of the hood on the Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one I'll put it in quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.